Hello, world. This is Palimpsest Live with the International Art Alliance. Hi, I'm Ross in Los Angeles. Let me introduce our panel for today. Cheryl's in Australia, Cheryl Wilcox. Welcome Stephanie back, Cheryl. Toronto. Yay. <laughs> Denise Boisman Pilker is in Quebec. <laughs> Morris Spadetto is in the United Kingdom. Hi. Rose Williams is in British Columbia. And as I said, I'm Ross in Los Angeles. And uh, today we have uh, an interesting discussion. I trust this is going to be interesting. And we also have a demo, how Yay. to uh, direct, transfer. direct transfer onto a nice panel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Instead of onto what I guess a piece of paper or something. So I guess you could I can't wait, this is so exciting and different. Okay, so artistic voice, artistic voice. Um, <clears throat> I have like certain Ooh. marks I make all the time. I have little idiosyncratic kinds of, um, you know, I, I have to work hard so that they're not shorthand so that if I'm really drawing, I'm drawing the, the forms and the thing, you know, not, not like, not like an idea of the thing, but in some ways, like that's part of my artistic voice, that uh, things will get reduced or... Distilled. Distilled. Yeah, thank you. So they become more like a signal, right, for what the thing is rather than the thing itself. I guess that's sort of the essence of, of cartooning. I don't really consider myself a cartoonist, but there's something kind of cartoony about what I what I do. And now that I own that, maybe my process and my work will change. But that's not really the point. The point that I want to talk about is these are parts of my artistic voice. They're qualities in the voice that I have. And I'm talking about voices in bringing in whatever is authentic about oneself or in interpretation of however you think your authentic, authentic self shows up in your work. Ross, that's really interesting because I do, your work is a little bit cartoony, I guess, some, some of it, right? Like, mm -hmm. is that your, and, um, and you're right because, you know, you get the essence, you get the essence of what you're drawing. It's not always, it doesn't have to be all the details, but you get the essence and you get the energy of what you're drawing. It's always very interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. True. So it's almost, very it's true. And you're an awesome sketch artist. It's almost the way, not like a cartoonist, but more like an animator has to kind of each storyboard, each scene has to like distill a whole bunch of movements into one. Huh. It's kind of the way you sort of distill, not just in terms of the visual language, but also your your thematic point that you're making. You kind of distill it into one kind of pow, like a cartoonist sure. does. Yeah. It's, and I'm wondering if that might also stem a little bit from your experience as a designer, you know, as an illustrator slash designer. I was just thinking in that, that term, like it's post a poster quality. There's a poster right. quality exactly. to a lot of what I'm, Yes, what I'm exactly. Doing. The pow. Catch you while yeah. you're walking by in the tube station. Boom. <laughs> you. I love it. You know what? I'm thinking specifically of um, on the our five by seven test panels. I forget what painting it was. It might have been A. It was the one that Denise started, um, where you added the guy on the bicycle, right? The two guys on the, there were two guys on bicycles. Mm -hmm. It's just, it was so, like, you could see the movement there. You could see just, it was like they were driving with a purpose. Just, it was very impactful. It's very impactful. Well, thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, this is like a love fest on me. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying this. It's just the truth. It's not, it's not meant to be love, but okay. <laughs> but but it, what, no, it's the truth. But what, but what do you see in your work that's sort of like the thing that you do? I, I think in a way it's related to some of the things we've talked about in the past couple of weeks, like the idiosyncratic things that we do when we're working. The, the um, you know, there have been a cu couple of different things we've talked about that have been like, you know, kind of like a personal practice question. And, um, yeah. you know, maybe it's a little bit too definitive to say, oh, well, this is my, you know, my, my voice. This is my, my language. You just look at my work and that's what you'd, you'd see. Well, Denise, I know, for instance, 
now that you're working also in abstract, do you find that your voice is like coming out stronger? Maybe? I, I, like, I currently feel totally lost, to be honest. <laughs> you. So you feel like you're hoarse and croaky. I what? <laughs> like your voice is hoarse and croaky. Yeah. You haven't, you haven't quite found your pitch. I have not oh. found it yet. Yeah. To be honest, be. I, I oh. am, uh, I have, I, I, cause I started a second piece and I just confessed before we started this, that the first piece that I started that I thought was finished, I completely destroyed yesterday because the longer I was looking at it, the more I hated it. Um, and then I started a second piece, which, which I thought I was happy with, but then my husband came into the studio today and he was oh, like, no. oh, well, he doesn't like abstract art. So that's something already difficult. To keep in mind. But then he, he, he said that it felt, he got a feeling from it where uh, somebody is, is trying to take a step but doesn't want to take it. Ooh. Which Interesting. makes me feel that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing here. Right. Even oh. though I really like the piece that I'm, I, I thought I liked it. Right. Would you get another opinion though, Denise? Like, could you get someone else's opinion? I think and someone yours. who's like, who's real with you? I think uh, yours. I think what you're, what you're saying Mine? is he saw, he saw well, the tentative, he saw the tentative yeah. aspect of your process. Yeah. In, yeah. In, right. In the piece. I'm sorry. He saw you holding back. Yeah. 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 Right Materially, right? Like, yeah, that part of the process. Like, yeah. Yeah. How you're, how you let yourself go into it. But yeah, and that's the kind of valuable feedback most of us want, really. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. Yeah. But now I'm. I feel like I don't know how <laughs> to proceed, <laughs> though. <laughs> Girls yeah. like, no, keep your mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were you saying? No, but now I don't feel like I because I thought I knew where it was going, and now I don't anymore. So like right at this moment, when you ask me right now, I I fucking feel very lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can't? Why can't you go further into what you're already doing? Like like as Rose said, you know, if there's a tentativeness to it or a a, a part well, that's, you know not because yeah. it is it is very. Um, it's very light. There's a lot of white space, which I like. It's very mm -hmm. um, based around different textures, different texture values. Um, and I already took a huge part of the layering effect that I really liked away by painting a lot of white around it yesterday. Right. And I'm afraid that if I add more to it, that I take away more of what I liked about it getting tighter uh, yeah it's yeah but maybe i don't know just from my own process sometimes i need to go through that getting tighter part to kind of be able to get loose me too Fence. me and too i'm going like through that right now medium, yes. with the medium that i use like watercolor water-based media sometimes i kind of get tight first and it, i have to kind of it's almost like building up to like a tension and then I have to like, before I can get loose. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe that's something that more than myself go through as artists, right? It is the most I painful do. part of the process. It yeah. feels Here. very painful right now because I, yeah, uh, because in, 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 because I'm doing the abstract that that's taking up more of my creative brain right now and i'm not enjoying the other work as much right but i feel stuck in the abstract piece that i'm doing so now nothing feels good <laughs> it's interesting it may you remind me like what you're going through it reminds me of when i was studying dance and i was a dancer and it was like all of the tight bar work and like exercises like the barres and everything it's very very tight and precise but then when you're dancing it's almost like something in your brain has to kind of let the tightness go to let the movement flow but then because you were practicing all of those barres so much 
this the the precision stays but you're able to be loose but precise at the same time mm -hmm. if that makes any sense yes yeah, it does yeah it, yeah. It's, it, and it is something that you have to kind of almost leap off the cliff feeling it's a mm -hmm. leap off the cliff feeling like i remember when it would be a performance it was like okay leap off the cliff here because it's it's now it's happening and it has to flow <laughs> You can't get caught up in your mind like a singer. You can't get caught up in what are the lyrics because then it won't flow and you won't have the emotion, right? So you, it's like this kind of like throw yourself off the cliff kind of experience. <laughs> Take and a leap of faith. You, yeah, people yeah. respond yeah. to that in the work, right? They it gets But to me, that's a that is a totally um, new new thing because my work is so planned and so yeah. meticulous. And, and I, from every point of when I create a painting, I know, even when it's diff when I go through the difficult times with a piece, with my regular pieces, I know where, where I'm going to get out of that because I mm. have done it so many times and I've mm. never done this before. So I'm feeling very lost. <laughs> oh, like how exciting. First time cliff jumping. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's very it's exciting. Kind of, it's, it's great kind of feeling. Of <laughs> It's good for you because you are growing up well as a as an artist. I think that that is a sensation to get lost. It's a fundamental in, your, yeah. in yeah. our path because if you, uh, I get you when you know uh, what you are. It's like a, a secure, a safe space. Uh, so um, you know what yeah. you're doing, but it's um, uh, like uh, uh, exciting. Uh, when you start something new, and I think probably also you, um, because I, I remember that you started with a very big panel. I don't know if that second one is a uh, same as size, as, but I also have uh, uh, three small ones that I'm doing, like that I started. Because why only let yourself get lost in one thing when you can do like five of them? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I have three more panels that are waiting for something. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, is it, because the abstract is very uh, is, is a really difficult because you have to it find is. something that it's inside you, but you don't know where yeah. to where to check where do you, where do you need to find it. Yeah, and all, only doing it you can see uh, you can uh, feel feel the sensation and know. Uh, if it's right or if it's wrong and if you have to change everything again. yeah so um, but uh, it's uh, like an, uh, an adventure yeah, <laughs> it's exhilarating like an adventure. it's exhilarating to go mm -hmm. into that unknown unfamiliar territory and kind of muck about unless you really feel pressured and you have a show <laughs> but otherwise it, it's it's exhilarating right yeah because that's why I'm I'm saying it's like throwing yourself off a cliff because there's that kind of sense of the unknown. But you know you can really rely on on all of your years of practice, like yeah, and that's just, difficult. And but also, you got it; it's there. So all the principles of design are packed in there at the back of your brain. And maybe if you let go a little bit more and trust and have faith that your own your principles of design are are so solid that they're they're not going to let you down you know like they're your parachute when you can jump off that cliff because you've practiced so much denise you have practiced mm -hmm. you've been like you're the kind of artist that does it every day so those principles that like cheryl talks about the elements of design those basics are so integrated into you personally i think you should just let yourself go maybe have a glass of wine first <laughs> that's not a bad idea i'm not right just have I a would, glass of wine i would like to stay Turn on the music and and just have no but just let the barriers go all of that checking into your process and all of the finding your voice it's there now it's time to just let yourself go and see what happens and just have faith that all of that stuff that is so important to you 
the structure and all of that, it's just going to naturally come out. Uh, I would like to I say think, also, the, don't, don't, don't ask about feedback because the abstract is uh, so uh, individual. Uh, probably something that uh, a person can see, someone else that doesn't, doesn't yeah. see. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's your process. It's not some, it's, uh, totally different from yeah. what you've done before or, or you're doing uh, right now also, but uh, it's, it's um, more in, intimate. So. Mm -hmm. Don't ask about feedback. Be because oh, I didn't the... ask. He just volunteered. Don't say anything. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Out of a play piece that's not even fucking finished yet. Here, wait, I got to show you. Here are the studio rules in my studio. See that first one? Yeah. No, no, no comment. comment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But exactly. it kind of means that nobody comments. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> certainly don't comment on something I know I haven't finished. <laughs> I mean, fun. the other day when we had our Parker Art Salon, I took my unfinished painting out and I put it in the car for that because I really didn't mm -hmm. want to have to explain. I didn't want people seeing it naked. You know, <laughs> it's, un <laughs> it's unclothed at this point. <laughs> Oh, that's a fascinating way to look at it. It just feels like that. It feels yeah. it's like it's vulnerable to to judgment. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. It's not ready. I'm not ready yeah. till I have my hair done and my makeup on. <laughs> right. That's so cool. Cheryl, you've been yeah. unusually quiet. Tell What's going on, Cheryl? <laughs> Well, I, I, I was sort of thinking. I was thinking about Denise, and I was sort of thinking, wow, is she getting into color? And I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to unpick, you know, where her, where, where her thoughts are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, um, I, I've actually done a little series of paintings. I should just bring them over. So somebody else, if you want to look, I'll just spend a, a minute. What's in back of you is gorgeous. It's looking mm -hmm. really nice. I think Cheryl has a new show going That's on. That's Terradell, isn't it? Two? And, and so Rose, you had your, your weekend this weekend, huh? Yeah, last weekend. Yeah, last no, it weekend. was yeah, it was dismal. It was not well oh. attended, but it was fun to see everybody else's artwork in their studios. Oh, we have some. Ooh, oh, nice. Ooh, that's your local. Is that your local landscape, or or what you saw on your trip? Yeah, there we go. Is, is that your trip? Are your trip sketches or your local landscape? Um, these are the, these are part of the trip. This is part of the Blue Mountains. But what I was working with when you're talking about um, the concept of so I was just working about composition, of course, the big blocks, but I was actually trying to sort of simplify. But I was really working hard with colour. So I was working with ultramarine and cerulean, trying to pull stuff, I don't know. So this is like my little bit more into the abstraction. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful, Cheryl. Oh, those are nice. I'm um, yeah. just doing, um, I mean, I've got a few more of these, but this is just... Yeah. Um, Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow. The warms mm. and the cools working with each other. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. And anyway, so I, I was really just doing these in terms of um, just color sort of like studies. And I, I was just having such a brain drain trying to be so disciplined with um, Did I show you that one? This one here isn't quite working, but anyway. I mean, the edges on this foreground piece need to be sharper. Hmm this foreground piece in my mind to bring the whole oh, right. platform mm -hmm. Because they're in focus. But I was really right. just sort of working with um, like big areas of, 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 of colour. But any, uh, anyway. Impressionistic almost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I, I've been, um, um, because what I tend to do is um, I tend to hide behind my brush strokes. <laughs> what does that mean? But they are beautiful though. <laughs> I, I, um, yes, you do have beautiful brush strokes. Yeah. I, I, if, if I often, um, yeah, I, I'll just, you know, sort of, yeah, it's really funny how I'll, I, I can almost sort of like feel it. <laughs> what, like a shorthand what do you mean? or virtuosity yeah. or what's the? Yeah, what? I, I, I suppose. Um, I, I feel like, yeah, um, the way that I apply paint sometimes, I often let that, that's one of my main things. Hmm. And I often I can feel it. I can feel Come on, you need to actually, those colors aren't working. You're relying on your breaststrokes. 
you really need to get something happening here with your colour. Mm. This is not working. I mean, I have a perfect one behind me that I was struggling with. I like that one a lot. Yeah. It's great. But I was feeling that my values down the bottom, sorry, I, I felt that it was too cool down the bottom, so I really, really warmed it up mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. a lot, if that makes sort of sense. So yeah. mm -hmm. I was working with, so, sorry, sort of like um, um, cool and warm colours because this had too much lemon yellow in it, so I tried to make it. And I'm trying to put a lot more ultramarine blue in it to make it more transparent to give you that feeling of looking into that, layers and into water. water. Yeah. yeah, but um, I, I was sort of, and, and I wanted to make some of these waves more luminous. And, and I was trying to think about how photographers use a key light, you know, how often where the light's coming from. But so anyway, so there you go. So I have been, um, I, 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 I'm always trying to work with the concept of warm and cool colours and how you can manipulate them to make my paintings well feel better if that makes sense or feel yeah. complete but that's really what I was actually doing in some of these pieces I was really just working with you know like that cerulean and then I was working with cobalt or yeah, cool. blue. Yeah. Like, series like yeah and then I was really structured with these sorts of yellows and trying to bring it back but I was but yeah anyway so there you go a little bit it of sounds, it, it sounds to me like we're all talking about kind of like pushing the boundaries and getting into that place where we're a little bit uncomfortable. And yeah. so maybe part of finding your voice as an artist is noticing or being aware of when we become too comfortable. Hmm. And when we're, we're kind of just doing something that is so familiar and so practiced that, you know, is that, is that my voice or is that, my complacency. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's a good. But to, to bring it yeah, back, back to you, Ross, does it feel that way to you when right. you when you're talking about your your um, your pictorial language and the way you um, you boil down your your the the things that you want to um, to convey into these very um, concise elements? Does it feel constricting to you? As, or, or is it like does it like like rose just said is that is it something that um you do because you feel comfortable there or well i never feel comfortable making art that never happens oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it does every now and again but it's <laughs> anyways um uh, it always feels a little subversive doesn't it Ross? it does yeah it really does i understand yeah um, gosh, I have so many answers to this question. <laughs> well, come on, Let, let's hear him. I win the first one. <laughs> um, yes, and now my mind has gone completely blank. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> talking about me, talking about my work, talking about- I can't wait. Uh, Laura, what are you saying? Oh. Nothing. Okay. No, no, no. Disappeared <laughs> something. Uh, okay, maybe, maybe Denise can you ask me. Maybe you can talk about your process. Uh, how, how do you, uh, when you start your an, an artwork, how, how is the you. process? Thank you, Laura. That helps me fr frame it much, much better. So, so Denise, to to kind of like bridge your question with what what Laura just asked. So, um, like as a as a professional illustrator, right, solving design problems with a picture allows for a certain kind of you know thinking about Language. the thing and um you know one of them is to communicate clearly something that's been referenced before right like that's kind of the essence of the game um and then graphic design is um you know it's got a lot of different parameters but the way that they talk about it in my my school was a uh, problem graphic problem solving um, right. So, a, a, as all of those things are are uh, circumscribed by some kind of a definition, like I do, I get a concept first, and then I illustrate my concept. Except in my facilitation practice, where I facilitate the Jewish studio process, that's really about just process, and there's a different set of, set of things that that goes through. So then I work on those things too, but those things, it's like um, 
Uh, I, I don't know how to talk about them. I don't know how to show them to anybody. And there's a bunch of other stuff that I do too that is like I also, words fail me. So um, like I guess in a way artistic voice in those cases is lost <laughs> since they're, you know, it's a gift I'm making just to time and space without further ado and like not to people, right? Um, but then what I'm trying to communicate with people, like I guess that would be my my voice and um but 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 it's in the illustration process the way that the way that uh illustrators do do their sketches like thumbnails and then a, a, a rough and then a tighter rough and then the tightest rough ever and then make changes and then do it all again you know like this kind of insanity <laughs> right like did not sit well with me and part of it is because i am actually physically incapable of drawing kind of the same thing the same way ever like I just can't do it. It oh. never comes out that way. No, it never does, does it? No. Or so, that you could that you could even tell that it was me who necessarily drew it. Oh. Yeah. So in essence, like artistic voices, right? Like you you know, you can tell I can't think of any singer. The first thing singer I thought of was somebody who I do not know, Lana Del Rey. I have no idea who she is. But like people hear her and they like know exactly who she is. She's like got that cut, you know. Or Neil know. Young. Or Neil Young, thank you. That's much better. Whitney Houston, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and even Bob Dylan, you can tell it's Bob Dylan, even though he's got a lot of weird different ways yeah, of yeah. singing. Because yeah. Neil Young and Bob Dylan sing off tune, and they made a whole career out of it. <laughs> thank you. Oh, yes, yeah. that's cool. it's true. They sing out of key. They did. They did. They did. Yeah. That's their thing, off and Neil key. Young will tell you, "Don't change my tunings." Yeah. And Dylan, he just kind of speaks when he sings, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right? <It's... laughs> yeah, he doesn't really sing anything. He just kind of talks. But sings. you know, yeah. as you that is a, a, a oh, wait, pertinent no. point to what is the artist's voice? Because let's face it, Neil Young. I mean, he has faced some pushback. David Foster gave him a hell of a hard time in the studio or tried to. And Neil Young was like, no, sorry, you don't auto tune me and you don't make me change my tunings. I'm Neil Young. This is how I sing. Either take it or leave it. And let's face it, that's his voice as a musician, as an artist. That's his attitude. Those are his lyrics. You take it or you leave it. I don't care what you think. That's who he is, and that's his artist's voice. Right. So it, it was very interesting when I heard him interviewed, and he said, oh, yeah, David Foster, oh, he's so great and so perfect, and he's, he works with Celine and Josh Groban and all the perfect singers. But when he worked with me, he did it my way. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, I mean, he's an artist, right? And, and it's, that's an artist who knows, is, is, is confident in his artistic voice, who has yes. had to answer questions about what is your artistic voice. So he knows what to say. Mm. We're just trying to work it out, right? Like, okay, if I'm being interviewed and someone says, oh, well, what about all those, you know, like for me, oh, well, why are you painting brown women in your paintings? You know, well, I'm going to say why, because I'm trying to represent myself where I didn't see myself represented when I was growing up, the mm -hmm. only brown woman I ever saw represented was Diane Carroll and Lieutenant Uhura. That was it. So I want to insert myself into popular culture. Thank you very much. So I understand why I'm doing that. Voice. Yeah. Our voice. What do we have to say? Like Stephanie was saying, what does our artwork say about us? That's part of yeah, you did a couple episodes ago. Okay. You're yeah, you so did. brilliant and you didn't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's like we're all visual artists. We're hanging something on a wall. Does it represent me? Is that my voice? Is that who I am? Not completely. It's a piece of artwork that I made. But at the same time, I have imbued it part of myself, even sometimes when I don't even realize it. Hmm. Like, like, like Ross is saying, even when you're an illustrator and you're doing a brief, you are still inserting your artist's voice into that when you 
when you present the final product, you still have your artist's voice in there. Sometimes somebody would say that would be a style. Like you can tell Maurice Sendak's illustrations, for instance, uh, yeah. you know, compared yeah. to another. You know, this has been a, such an interesting conversation. I've just loved every minute of it. But we have a demonstration that we've, that we've been promised from Denise. Hey, hey, you're going to be printing on something, a direct transfer. What yeah. is a direct transfer? Well, I'll, I'll give you a really, because we don't have that much time left. So I'll give you a really quick uh, and dirty Basically, what you do is you take a, a photocopy of a, of a photograph. Uh, black and white works better than color, and it works best if you have a laser print because the powder-based ink is basically lying on top of the uh, paper where uh, a, an inkjet ink is um, in, injected into the paper, and you're taking the paper away. So you can imagine if the ink is on top of it, most of the ink stays, be stays behind, but if you have the paper injected into the the ink injected into the paper you take most of the print away when you take away the paper um you can do it on any surface that is uh, absorbent so i do i like to do them on a wood panel um although it's a little harsh on the fingers but you can also do them on uh, canvas or canvas boards uh, doing them on paper is possible but really really tricky because the paper is very very delicate and paper. there's a lot of rubbing involved but those uh, the, over there those are uh, direct transfers that i've done on paper so it is possible but it requires a little bit of finesse um you do this by the magic of uh, a matte medium i find a matte medium uh, a matte acrylic medium works better than a glossy one because the properties that make it matte hold on to the pigments of the photograph a little bit better uh, yeah. I like to use Golden, uh, it's my brand, but uh, you can also do it with any other uh, acrylic medium. Matte. Matte medium, yeah. I mean, glossy works too, but the matte, it just works a little bit better. Um, I have a wood panel, you can do it on a bare wood panel. This one is has been, it was a test piece for something that I did, but I like to treat my wood panels before um, with like a little bit of a... Uh, Clear medium? Clear, clear gesso, thank you, yeah. Uh, it does make it a little bit rough on the fingers again, but oh well, we deal with that, right? Um, you, what you want to do, fingers. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you basically want to figure out first where about you want your thing to be. Then you want to cover the area uh, of where you want your thing to do with medium. Now you have to be careful that you make sure that there's medium everywhere where your photograph is going to be because there, if there is no medium, there's not going to be a transfer because the medium is what holds on to the pigments. So um, put a little bit here. I like to use a wide flat brush and oop, you can be generous with this. You want a nice thick layer, but you don't want any big blobs. You want it to be nice and even because she wants to dry evenly. So you want to spread it out nice and even like that, but you want to make sure that it's a good, decent layer. Amount. Yeah. So, because if there, again, if there's too little, an acrylic dries really fast. So if there's too little of it, it yeah. will be dry before it can uh, make friends with all your pigments. And mm. then you slap your photograph wherever it needs to be. In this case, I'm not going to even watch. I'm going to watch myself on camera doing this. <laughs> and then you take a squeegee. These are, uh, I buy them at Canadian Tire. It's, uh, I think they use them for cars, but you can use any type of squeegee. And then by, I, I'm going to do this flat for a little bit, but you want to apply a lot of pressure and squeeze out all of the excess medium. So basically, you want to make sure that your photo and your surface become really, really close friends. That's how I like to put it. So really, and it doesn't really matter if you leave like a little bit of medium on the top, that's all fine. But you want to make sure that all of the bubbles and all of the excess medium is out from underneath it. And there you go. And then you want to wait for a little bit. Now it's quite warm in my studio, so this can be anywhere between, let's say three to five minutes ish. It's, it's really, you can, you can feel the back of the paper. Um, once when you've just done it, it's a little bit damp. You want to wait until it's 
there there is this this sweet spot that you can hit where if you you start pulling it off you can pull off the entire thing in one go that's really satisfying when it works it doesn't <laughs> always though if you are too early you will pull away most of the photograph if you're too late it's just going to take you a whole lot of time to clean it but it's not impossible i've done them and and you just leave them and and doesn't really matter um the thing with this technique is that um it is going to damage your photograph so you're not going to have nice a nice pristine transfer um i do do you can get a pristine transfer by doing a different transfer technique but this one you always get a little bit of the the grungy damage in your photograph which i call a happy accident i like that sort of broken up quality of them but some people get really frustrated and i always tell them well you always have a little bit of black paint to fix it with so Great. Very true. So, so then when you think, I think this is about done, you just have to start in one of the corners and you sort of have to test whether or not your, uh, your paper wants to separate. So what you want is you want, and you can already see I'm pulling up a little bit of the photograph here, but you want the, the, the top layer of the paper to let go and then the bottom layer to stay behind. And then when you've made a start, you can just start sort of rolling it up like this. That's why you said it's hard on your fingers. Oh, this is not even the, the, mm -hmm. the worst part. Gotcha. This is only the start of it. But you can see that um, I'm taking away just the, the top, top part layer. of the paper, the top layer. Denise, maybe yes. I missed what kind of paper did you? That's this just is a regular, regular, bond, regular, regular old printing paper. paper. That you'd use in your paper in your it's, in your it's a regular old pin the the cheaper the paper the better you want cheap cheap paper so no glossy we'll go and get the regular just batch yep. of paper just a batch of printing paper i have a um a laser printer at home so i print these on just regular old printing paper well at this stage um we're going to introduce just a tad of water you want to be really careful at this stage still because the um this medium is a water-based medium, so any moisture that you introduce will uh, solve, will be, will make this dissolve. But you want to create a little bit of friction between the paper and your fingers. So I just take a cloth, I, I really press all the water out of it, and I just do this once, and then I start rubbing. I always tell people mm. the best way to do this is use your fingers. They're the best tools your mommy ever gave you. <laughs> and then you just want to and it's here it's real funny this because it's a tactile technique so other than you can probably see it where this is really really black now yeah wow yeah this is how clean you can get it some people when you when they do it they they will still have get this really bit a little bit of a haze but you can get it really right. really clean and actually when you feel it this will feel smooth where this will feel oh. uh, sort of right. rough yeah. At least it's smoother. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still a wood panel. You're touching the emulsion now. Because yes, exactly. You touch the emulsion, you can feel it. Yeah, and now that I'm and going down, to be a really good... you will see here. There's a little bit of the damage that I was talking yeah. about. Oh but yeah. See, okay. so I, I kind of like that because it will it, it gives that mm -hmm. sort of that old fashioned sort of feeling to it. And like made. here too in the in the yeah. wood here. You see that breaks up right. a bit yeah. and every once in a while you just want to um reintroduce that wet part and then you can really i can do them really quickly because i've done this a thousand times <laughs> do you have any I mean, uh, any fingerprint only, left only. i have actually done this on a 48 by 24 panel oh and my god i've done two of those and my fingers were bleeding at the end no kidding oh. Yeah. And did it actually? I'm I'm, I'm actually kind of serious. But did it? Does it do anything to your fingerprint? Like, can you go and break into people's houses and not get caught? Uh, no, uh, it just goes back. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> so basically, uh, this is what it would look like. Ross, Ross, Yay! Oh, Ow. We're about. That's cool. <laughs> I used to do these with, um, and I. 
think that was also with a laser print, but I'm not 100% sure. I think so, because I used to use, when we had an old fashioned copy machine at school, and then I would do them, and I'd do them with acetone. Hmm. I yeah, think that's the, the same. Yeah, the oil is a similar concept. Yeah. Where it, it dissolves the paper, yeah. but it doesn't touch the photo emulsion. Yeah. But they don't get as black as these, hmm. I find. Mine did. Really, I did yeah? mine on. Uh, I did mine on fabric on on. Um, oh nice. I on oh yeah. Fabric. No, I only did them on on like um, canvas. Panel. I think so. They got yeah. a little watery. Ah, uh, well, I did and mine on could... uh, medical gowns, <laughs> hospital gowns. Yeah. What do you want to say? Interesting. Denise, you could keep that and and uh, like sell it. It's, it's a work of art in itself. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's it nice. is. Yeah, yeah, I've sold I've sold this image before. Usually, I, I treat this as an underpainting. Um, I've done pieces that were just the transfer where I just did a little bit with the black paint where yeah. I wanted to add some. So I like to layer like a thinner layer of black paint over the um, yeah, sorry, black glaze over the damaged areas okay. where you get a little bit of depth. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, I I really like uh, the look of of uh, of this. Yeah, that looks. Really I especially cool. like it looks. It looks this. really pretty and a little spooky, but pretty. You know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Spooky. So that's how you do a direct transfer. In the black. <laughs> so I have one more question before we, we go about that. Denise, the, your, lar your large pieces in your, in your signature style, as we might call it now, um, are, are these are direct transfer pieces also, or these are transferred? Because these are paintings. You paint everything that you've transferred in order. Yes. To, like every inch so of that is painted. If you look at these behind me, the ones on the on the uh, washi paper, those are the exact same transfer technique as this. Although all those photographs are very much um, manipulated on the computer first. Same goes for this one, by the way, because um, the more gradient there is in your photograph, the less pigments there are going to be in that one place which means there's a lot more um, possibility for the image breaking up so it's mm. easier with an image that has a lot of contrast so i really work with my images mm. a lot a lot a lot uh, before i print yeah. them out um, now the other pieces that i work on like the ones that's on my easel right now those woo, those woo, are a different type of transfer that's a type of, that's a, it's called a gel skin transfer. And there's l uh, less chance of the image breaking up in that. You get more detail out of them. More subtlety. Um, more, more subtlety, more, more uh, small, small, Total tiny gradations. details. Yes. And yeah. what about I would fingers? love to see a demo with that, of that at some point. Yeah. Yeah. That, does that, I know, does that, I know how to do the image transfer, but that I'm not, I've never done before. That would be really interesting. It would be a little bit more involved, but yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, a fingertip intensive process too uh it, it does require you to clean the gel skin with your hands although uh, i also use um a cloth to do it but you have to be really careful because again those pigments they're delicate so if you rub too too roughly with uh, with it um you you tend to damage them but then again for all of the transfer first goes that for me they're treated as an underpainting so if you look at that right. one in the corner for example uh, there is still a lot of the original transfer there, especially in, in the corner there where there's the leaves. But the woman, almost all of the transfer has been painted over. So that was, that was truly an underpainting because the um, um, contrast needs to be so high, especially with the kimonos, I lose so much of the detail. The in, subtleties. Yeah, and the subtleties that you have to re, uh, reintroduce yeah. into the to painting. To get gradations. Hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Thank you so much, Denise. We learned oh, so much. Yeah, well. thanks, Denise. So cool. That's great. So cool. And it's a reversal, so isn't it mirror image? Yes. Yeah, it is yeah. a mirror image. The, mirror for image. these, yes. For the for the uh, gel skins, no. Those are just um direct. Uh, direct, yeah. Mm -hmm. This uh, the, these you need to if you especially if you want to do text or anything, you need to mirror your images before you print them. Yeah. Because they're yeah. otherwise mirror yeah. mirror image. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before we that go, demo sure. would be a good one for your 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 own YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, it's up there. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I've done them awesome. many times. Like I do these for, uh, I've done these for like corporate uh, events and stuff. Uh, oh, cool. What's the handle so to watch your you. YouTube channel? The Artist Abroad. I am the nice. artist abroad everywhere. Everywhere. Under everywhere. All, under all circumstances. The artist abroad. <laughs> yes. yes. Cheryl, the one Cheryl, and only. A show going on now? Who, me? Cheryl. Cheryl. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm just, yeah, I've got one um, at the end of August. Hmm. Nice. And I've, and I've got to get my brain around it because I've been sort of in La La Land also. I've also <laughs> been really sick. I haven't had. Yeah, you sound congested. Anything wrong with me for ages and I've been sick for two weeks. Wow. <laughs> oh, gee. And I'm just, I'm feeling okay today. But you know, these things like this dreadful, like burning lungs and I'm going like, holy hell. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my. I'm getting better, but I haven't been sick Very for years. Much. Like you know, and it's not COVID, Dan. You know, I've, I've missed out on that again. <laughs> <laughs> have you never had COVID, Cheryl? Did you never no, have COVID? That's what I'm My son-in-law got off the boat. He had COVID, and three of us had this RSV virus, and two of them were really good. Yeah. Two of them just had hangovers. <laughs> 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 is it an RSV virus or is it a hangover? <laughs> That's funny. Well, listen, we've had a wonderful time today. Mm -hmm. This has been a, a educational and just a really good conversation with you guys. Thank you for yeah. for coming together or sitting at the table all together. And, and you out there in TV land, come back again next week. Yes. TV land. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.